everyone, this is Dustin Cook coming at you from Chronic Fitness, and it's December 22nd, Tuesday, and today's subject is how I became an expat. Let's do it! Story time! So last week we went on a brief overview of my history and what it was like um, in my life and hitting the highlights. Today, we're going to go back about three years to 2017. Back in Las Vegas, I had lost my job. I had a very, very nice job in the casino industry. Opened up one of the best casinos um, in Caesars Entertainment, which is one of the best brands in the world. They're number three top casino in the world. I opened it up and and did really well for a couple years there at that company. Um, But all good things come to an end, and I was in a transitional period of my life where my friend who I served with in the Army had moved to Manila, Philippines to work remotely, and we came up with this plan through discussion that I should go over there and he can teach me how to do his job and that his manager had a position for me and everything was going to be good. I just got to get a certificate and then I can start working. I'll go back to Detroit and start working for this company. So that was the plan. So eventually I could work remotely and and live where he is working the same job he is. It was about an 18 month plan. I left everything behind in the United States in my home country in Las Vegas. I got rid of everything, sold everything. And I got on a plane to Manila for this job opportunity. I had a return ticket 90 days later to go back to the United States and go start working for this company in Detroit. That was the plan. I was going to move all the way over there after I uh, lived in Manila for 90 days training. When I got to Manila, I spent, I treated it like a job. I sat, I sat on the computer, learning from him, watching instructional videos. I had been learning in the States already how to do this job and um, come to realize that I didn't have the talent and aptitude to pick it up very quickly. And it was something I could have done potentially, but I would need a lot more time to put and devote into it to become proficient enough to um, be able to perform the duties that the physician required. And I also had learned through this process that um, my disabilities, um, especially my back pain, were not compatible with sitting in front of a computer for long hours at a time during the day. So 90 days goes by and I realize that I need to make a decision if I'm going to go back to where I I left with nothing and try to pick up the pieces and start over again from there or stay where I am and find a way to survive. And that was ultimately the decision I made after I had traveled around the country and took the time to meet a bunch of expats learn about the laws and learn how to survive and make money um, when you're not a citizen in the country that you're living. And came up with a few ideas and um, wound up up, um, filing for um, an increase in my disability, which I didn't realize I could do in the Philippines because Manila has a VA clinic there. So I transferred over all my health care and then filed for an increase because of my 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 disabilities um, from my service in the military getting significantly worse in the last 10 years. So it was something I was going to do in the States anyways, but hadn't got around to it because in the States it takes a very long time. Now, overseas in Manila, they automatically fast track it. So um, this was plan B. Plan A was to find some income in interim B while I was completely broke and just receiving my small check for my disabilities at the time. I wound up trying to do some English teaching online, um, running out of money, became homeless a couple times, slept on my friend's couch a couple times, really struggled during this time. I was at a very low point in my life. 
Um, all my resources were tapped and I was really hustling on an economy that was not my own. I was uh, a foreigner in a foreign land and um, trying to find a way where I had um, almost every disadvantage. Um, wound up doing some freelance acting and um, um, some stuff in the entertainment industry to make some extra money as um, a background extra, um, learning that trade and that grind. Um, and then eventually networked enough with enough expats to meet a HR manager for a five-star private island resort. And I took that position as a front office manager. During this time, my claim through for my disabilities, uh, the review was still going through. I spent about three months working for the company and realized that this wasn't for me either because it didn't fit my lifestyle. There was a lot of restriction and freedom and I was very remote. So I felt like I wasn't living my best life. Um, it was something I enjoyed and it was a unique experience and it got me through a really hard time in my life where I didn't have any money or any other opportunities. However, um, Three months later, after working the job, I needed to be available for medical appointments for the reviews, and um, that's I wound up uh, resigning and returning back to Manila, and then I hit another low point, um, sleeping on the floor on a foam mat with nothing um, next to the airport, very, very loud, couldn't sleep at night, um, you got into a couple of motorcycle accidents, so um, my, my body was really just in a bad place. Um, my finances were in a bad place. Everything in my life was not good. But I had the, I never gave up. And so um, I kept going to my medical appointments and going through the system. And eventually after um, a couple more months, they awarded me an increase, which was enough to live off of um, in my current circumstances. So then things finally relaxed a little bit. So this brings it into about two, middle of 2018, where then I eventually decide to start traveling around Southeast Asia um, quite a bit. And um, because I was enjoying the, the relaxed financial situation that I, I had finally achieved. And, um, in this moment of time, I, st I, I still hadn't been able to exercise or eat properly. So my, my body was really in a bad place. I got really thin and then I started getting really overweight. Um, and my mindset was really like in this place where, do I have a future and should I just do this for the rest of my life, sitting on a couch, being a disabled veteran, doing nothing? And um, eventually through um, traveling and meeting new people, I met my friends Jason Roberts and John Burton um, at Chiseled Fitness. You can find him on IG. Um, he is be wound up becoming my best friend later on. But when that the original when we first met each other in the initial stages we all this was at the end of 2018 and we were all really thinking about the next year and so we had talked to each other and made promises to each other that we were going to get um, physically fit and healthy and so after they left and went back to their countries um I made it my mission to keep my promise to John because something that's really important to me is that when I say something, I do it. And so my, my word is my honor. There's something they teach you in the military. Your last name is everything. So who you are as a person represents your family and, and you as a man. So I'm, I'm really big on what you say is what you do. So I took it very seriously. I completely changed my diet. And then I got a coach and I started going to the gym five days a week and working really hard at it. And that was my focus for about the next six months. And after that, <laughs> we had a water crisis in Manila. So in the middle of 2019, I was forced out of the country 
to go find refuge in another city overseas in Asia nearby. So I wound up eventually landing into Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, and spending about two months there waiting for the water crisis to end in Manila um, so I could have water in my home again. And during this, these, these next six months in 2018, after I kind of got a lot more fit and lost weight and I got a lot healthier, I realized that I need to make another change in my life because um, having the influence of John and Jason and then the rest of my friends that came with it, there was other friends like uh, um, we have another friend, Enrique, and a few others that I met that were very much ahead of me in life. And I'm not just talking about in maturity or where, however you want to measure it. But for me, my measurement was they were not worried about money like I was. And I didn't, I knew that if they found a way to do it, there was got to be something for me out there that worked for me at 32 years, years old as a disabled veteran that I can do to better my life and have purpose because every man I believe needs to have purpose in their life, something to do to give them a reason to wake up in the morning. And for me at the time it was fitness and gym, but I needed to find something else. And so I had made the decision, uh, I'm going to go back to college and come up with a plan B. And at that time I wanted, I, I still believe that programming and computers are the future and that's where you need to have your education so you can be doing that um, at anywhere in the world um, anytime there will be a demand for it and so I made the decision that in 2020 that I was going to move away from the Philippines get rid of everything and start over again in a new city and a new, uh, find a new school to get a higher education. So that is where I'm going to leave it off today. And my takeaway for this is, is that um, this is an accidental journey to becoming an expat and living overseas. But what I really want to focus on on this particular episode is that no matter how hard it is or how down and out you are, if you have seek the knowledge, seek the advice, and seek the help of others, and looked up to other people as your mentors, and found avenues that are proven to work, and you push hard enough, you will be okay. Even when you're at the deepest, darkest times of your life. I had no idea about the Philippines. I had never been there before. Before I joined the army, I had never left the United States. I never even seen the ocean. This is a kid that grew up in the countryside and in Chicago, a city country kid who had n never even dreamed about getting on a plane or going out of the country and eventually became an expat at the and in his late 20s. You never know what life can be or how big or amazing adventurous it can be. It, it, it's unfathomable. So where you are now in life, you'll never be able to guess where it can be in 10 years from now. And there's no reason to need to. What you need to do is dream about what you want out of life and then go for it. And on the way, your life is going to transform into many different beautiful things that you never expected. You're going to meet people and do things that you never even dreamed about. And so I want to leave you that no matter how hard it is right now, how hard 2020 was for you, that if you make it through to the end on the other side, there's always a bright side to it. The dark times are so short in comparison to the light that's on the other side of the darkness. I love you all and I'll see you next time.